So after working with those systems over the last five years, we started to ask ourselves, how can we spend the most time possible repurposing, assigning purpose? How can we spend the most time possible looking around us and saying, what is this? What is it for? What else could it be for? What are its properties? How can I give it a new purpose? Because this is this kind of like the liquefaction of meaning in the physical world. And, and how do you make a tool that catalyzes this kind of like, you know, like if you give somebody alcohol, they get drunk. What do you give somebody so they liquefy the meaning of the physical world? And so, and we want to spend as little time as possible kind of in the cognitive space, the pure cognitive space. We want to mix cognitive, emotional, creative spaces. And, and so, and we really don't just want squeaky sounds as an output. That's, it was pretty cool. But we really want these complex systems and we want, we want to repurpose the virtual world and repurpose the physical world and smash it together. And Makey Makey was kind of the confluence of those. Um, here's just a little bit about Makey Makey for one minute. So kind of like dumpster diving online for video games, kind of like scrounging around in the physical world for parts, making little sketches of user interfaces. Again, searching around online, dumpster diving online, coming to the physical world using familiar tools in a new way. Those are drawers from a, from a, um, a dresser, a cheap plastic dresser. That's just a piano you can get online. It's a flash piano. These are the stairs in my house in Virginia. This is my cat. That's aluminum foil. That's photo booth on a, on a Mac. And this is just a Facebook text field with a status update. So the basic functioning is just this high resistance switching. So we actually did a lot of technical work behind the scenes to get this to work. When, when two things touch, just like a, when you turn on a light switch behind the wall, there's two pieces of metal that touch and then let the electricity flow, turn on a light. In this case, um, we set up a really sensitive high resistance switch uh, using basically just a voltage divider of a 50 mega ohm resistor um, with the physical world in line with that. Uh, and then we did a whole lot of DSP to get rid of all the noise that you get when you're working at high resistance and make it all run really efficiently on a tiny microcontroller and pull 18 ports at the same time and respond within less than a 30th of a second so that you feel that real-time responsivity. And even if you're working in a machine room or on stage with lots of lights and electricity, uh, that noise is kind of canceled out without any, any processing on the machine. Because you just want a plug and play device. You want to plug in and start going. Because we're talking, let's not get in the cognitive space here. Let's just start creating. This is the first prototype. We made it three years ago. That's a teensy uh, soldered to a perforated breadboard. And it sat like that for two years. We ran a workshop at the Exploratorium, and we didn't know where to take it next. We knew it was interesting, um, but we didn't know how to think about it, and we didn't know how to make the mouse work and all this stuff. And so SparkFun came to Media Lab uh, one year ago, and I sat down with the CEO of SparkFun, Nathan Seidel, and I said, okay, we've got this thing, we think it's pretty cool, it could be a whole keyboard, 80 keys, and you just hook to the key you want to replicate and hook it to the real world. And he's like, okay, that's a great idea. Let's do it, but we're not having 80 ports. You're obviously a beginner at this. We're going to have four ports, and you're going to have four keys that you can access. So I was like, okay. So I drew this sketch, and I said, okay, we'll have six keys. So he's like, okay, you got yourself a deal. Um, so that sketch, I gave that to a SparkFun engineer. I'm used to drawing my own circuits in Eagle, but... SparkFun wanted to do the engineering, so now I'm doing this new type of circuit making where I draw things and give it to them, and they gave me back this, and they're like, how's that? And I'm like, okay, it's a start. And I gave him some text back the first time because I didn't realize how this design process was going to work, and he gave me back this, and he's like, how's that? That's the front of the board on the top. 
the back of the board on the bottom. And so we, I said, good enough, let's make a first prototype and try it out and see what that feels like. So there you go. And that's what it came out like. Um, so a little more about the design process here. Then I took it into Photoshop. I took a photo of it. So this is a photo of that green board. I brought it into Photoshop and I said, it needs to look a little more like this. And we went back and forth. And here's the next one. You see, like, let's put some red around that ground plane on the bottom there. Just going back and forth here. Let's get rid of those arrows in the middle of the four arrows. We don't need those. There's already arrows there. Let's put a dot there. Let's fill in the red. OK, that's the next iteration. Then let's make it look a little nicer. Let's add uh, some more red around the bottom. And look at the arrows. Just look right in here. They become rounded. Let's round those off. But they look a little goofy, don't they? Still, it's like, uh, and we're really thinking this is going to hit thousands of people. And they're going to try to understand what this means. And they have to feel like they can use this. So it's like this kind of like, who does this level of design on a DIY circuit? This is in Eagle. This is like PCB layout. Why would you design it this much? But we really wanted it to feel the right way. So, and, and here you see these arrows corners, they're still sharp. Earth is not labeled. Uh, the dot com is in red over here. Now look at the next iteration. Dot com goes to silver. So now it's made of traces. So we're starting to point to the elements of the circuit board and using those elements, bringing them out. Earth is labeled, not ground, but earth, kind of tying back to this theme of what is ground really anyways in the first place. And here's the next iteration. Watch these, these rounded corners here on the arrows. Boom, these go a little bit less rounded. All these corners get rounded. That's the kind of stuff that we're paying attention to. Let's put Earth up here instead of down there. Let's kind of get everything looking beautiful so people feel like, I can approach this board. I can really start using it. Um, and now the back of the board. How did the back of the board evolve? Well, first he gave me this drawing. Next drawing. Uh, the first, first manifestation looks like this. There's the back of the board in real life, just a photo. I took a photo of that, brought it into Photoshop. You know, let's try to have an Arduino mode. Let's, let's put some back doors to this Makey Makey. Let's make it so, if I already know how to use Makey Makey, but I want to reprogram it, what do I do? Well, there's a stair step sequence of a place you can go to. Here's the next iteration. Let's label everything really easy to see when you first start. We'll call it mouse and we'll call it keyboard. We'll make it very clear. Here's Arduino. Arduino goes away, because if you already know what Arduino is, you don't need it to be labeled that. We'll call it output. Call it output. And then, let's put a, an output symbol here. OK, well, we, I asked the engineer to design an output symbol. He, he gave me this. I'm like, well, that's not really readable. And, and he's like, we're shipping this in like one hour. I'm like, OK, I'm driving home. I'm in Photoshop. That's an output symbol. That's simple. Put it on the board. He's like, OK. OK, so there's the final design of the back of the board. Um, of the box, also, we put some special features in there. We put some warnings. Um, and we put the open source hardware symbol on there. Uh, also, when you open the box, uh, you can't see that. But when you open it, there's these kind of secret things hidden in there. Um, and actually, embedded in the board itself, I don't know if you can see right here, but these are in the traces and then covered up by silkscreen. The world is a construction kit. Some of the secrets just kind of rolled in there. I've never really explained this to anyone, so I feel like Trying to, I feel like this is kind of like behind the scenes. And then a lot of people are like, what was the Kickstarter like? So I'm going to tell you a little about what the Kickstarter was like. You can ask me more if you want to know. But there's this basic thing where we really wanted $25,000 to make these boards because we couldn't afford to make them. So we put it up on Kickstarter. And the day I put it up on Kickstarter, I got on a plane and flew to Maker Faire because you've got to go to Maker Faire and show your stuff that's on Kickstarter. And then I landed from the plane and I checked Kickstarter and we were almost funded. And I was like, oh my god, what are we going to do? I guess that's good. And the trend pretty much continued. The only real spike is right here. And that was when Kickstarter sent out a newsletter talking about us. And the rest was pretty linear. People just kept buying it. And everyone really just wanted the basic one here, just the basic, give me the makey makey. I just want to make stuff. Um, so now let's talk about what people are doing with it. So like I said, we jumped on that plane. Um, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we got to Maker Faire. So here we are at Maker Faire. Um, and we set up some banana pianos and some beach ball controllers. Um, and then we met all these people. We met uh, Sylvia Super Awesome Maker with Sylvia Super Awesome Maker Show. And we met this kid. Uh, those LEDs across his hat are like a LED indicator of how much of something there is. And he has a methane detector in his pants that he had. And he said that he has big plans for using Makey Makey for fart detection. I didn't know how that would work. But he says it's possible. And then we won two Editor's Choice Awards at Maker Faire. And at Maker Faire, we gave out 200 Makey Makeys because Intel 
sponsored this booth with these early Makey Makeys, and we made it happen. And then, by accident, we didn't realize this would happen, we started seeing things out in the wild. So we saw this video, um, and we didn't think like, oh, people are gonna be posting videos now, because we just gave out 200 circuits. Um, this one was in the wild at the Exploratorium. And this, this was called Walkie Walkie, I guess. Um, and we're like, okay, this is the best part of the project. People are actually using it the way we thought they would use it. Let's have a contest. And so we put out a contest and we got things that we really, really didn't expect. So this is like a healthcare usage. A dad proposed to use this for his son who had cerebral palsy um, t for a custom controller so he could read his digital comic books. And his dad's like, well, these cost a lot of money for us to make. I can modify this every time my son's hand changes. I can modify it and tweak it so it'll work. And this um, boy said, I'm gonna make for my sister, uh, uh, for her birthday, a slideshow advancer uh, for that when she jumps on the trampoline, we'll go to the next slide. And um, this person said, when the bird lands in different places, different music will be played. And this is actually, this was a paper at TEI 2012 um, that, that let you uh, swish water around in a container to control something as a user interface. And Steve Mann was there and he said, that's already been done, our lab did that before. And, and now, it, uh, apparently it's been done again, this time with a Makey Makey. Uh, so there's a video that someone posted online of this. And this used to be high tech research. People are now manifesting this really fast. Um, some other stuff, a teacher said we're gonna set up a weather station uh, just using a Makey Makey and, and, and clever use of high resistance. And a grad student is using it to prototype mazes uh, and change them really fast for naked mole rat training. Um, someone said, I'm gonna have it Skype from under my stairs to my room. My parents come up the stairs, I'll pretend I'm asleep. It's a parent's alarm. 3D twister, and most importantly, a P logger. I don't know why you need that. Um, so we got all these really great contest submissions, like more than 300, and, and then we started making them. So here's 13,000 of them. Um, they've they're now started to ship out. And now that they shipped out, we're getting these videos, like unboxing videos and things like that. Stuff I thought I'd never see. These kinds of thank you videos. This is this talk, oh my God. And, and then it's like kind of the silly stuff, but used by, at, like at Rackspace, they said, oh, we'll, we'll spin up a cloud server using a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Um, and so this is this kind of like this story of like, how did I come to Makey Makey? What happened over the last two months? I don't really know. I've been working 80 hours a week. I've been finishing a thesis and starting a new job and I have a baby, and I'm just moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. I have no idea what's going on. I guess that's all I have to say. <laughs>